this video we're discussing factorial and we're basically talking about an operation that has the name factorial to it. The operation is simply essentially a multiplication problem that appears a lot. It appears so much that we give it a special notation and a special name. But really it's just a multiplication problem, a very special multiplication problem that appears enough that we give it a special name or notation. Um, the problem often appears in counting problems. And you can tell this problem is a counting problem because I've underlined the key phrase here, how many ways, right? So how many ways can you accomplish this task? And at this point in your course, you should have seen the fundamental counting rule at some point. Or if you're watching my videos, you would have seen the fundamental counting rule video. And that video would tell you that when you have a problem like this, one way you would usually try to approach it is to think of, well, can we break this up into steps that have to be accomplished? And then we should think about how many ways those steps can be accomplished, right? So first of all, how many steps would there be to do this? Well, we have to sit five people in five seats. So there are five steps, right? Sit a person in the first seat, sit a person in the second seat, so on and so forth. Let's draw a space to represent each one of those steps, right? So there are five spaces to represent the five steps of sitting five people into five seats. This will be sitting the first uh, seat, seeing the second seat, seeing the third seat, so on and so forth, right? All right, well, how many people, or how many ways can we accomplish the first step? In other words, how many people are going to be available to us when we first come to the five seats? Let's say they're at the movies all in one row, right? And we have this open seat here, the first one. How many ways can we see the five people there? Well, there are going to be five people we could put into that spot, right? A choice of five individuals that could go into that spot. But once we sit a person there, then when we get to the next seat, how many people are left to be sat? Well, only four, so we have four choices for the next seat, right? So this is fundamental counting rule, right? We break it up into steps, and then we figure out the number of ways we can accomplish the steps, right, one by one. All right, the third step of the process, we're going to seat the third seat, but by now we've already sat two of the people, so there'll only be three people left, and then there'll only be two people left, and then lastly only one person left for the last seat, right? So that's the logic of the problem. Now, fundamental counting rule says we're supposed to multiply these numbers together. And now we get the unique problem that comes up a lot in these counting problems. It comes up so often we've given its own name, this factorial operation. So this is, this is an example of factorial. Because what you see is we take a number and we multiply it by all the numbers, integers less than it, until we get down to 1, right? So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we're just counting down to 1 and we're multiplying all the way as we go. And so that's the operation. It has notation like this. We'll use you know, n factorial generically. Factorial is a little exclamation point. But what n factorial means is it basically means n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 dot dot dot. On and on and on, all the way till you get down to 1. That's the end of the string. So that's n factorial. That's what n factorial is. Here, in this case, we'd say that this number above is basically 5 factorial. So we're going to say this is really 5 factorial. That's the same as that multiplication problem. As far as getting the solution, it's just multiplication, right? We just have to do that. And you know, it's very difficult to do these sometimes. They get really big really quickly. This one's not so bad. Uh, we could do, for example, 5 times 4 here and see that that's 20. And then we have 6, so 20 times 6 is 120, times 1 is 1. So it's 120 total. The answer is 120. But the idea behind the problem is more important, right, than the actual specific calculation. So we know the answer here is going to be 120. But what matters mostly is that we understand that factorial is a special notation. So in other words, if you have something like 7 factorial, what you want to remember is this is the same as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And afterwards, there's no special trick to it. You just multiply it all out to get the solution. And that's all it is. So whenever you see this little exclamation point next to a number, you know that's what it's expressing, that idea. Take the number and multiply it by all the integers less than it until you get to 1. All right, easy enough. Some calculators have this on their keypad. You'll have it under um, sometimes a PRB menu or sometimes it'll be under one of the numbers. You can hit shift and hit it there. Um, in a graphing calculator, you hit the button math and then go under the PRB menu, and it's usually like the second option on the list there. But either way, factorial can be done just with a four-function calculator. It just takes a long time, and sometimes the numbers get really big. 